Cisco ACI Whiteboard Sessions and Tutorials. I mentioned previously spine and leaf topology. And not too many people understand this design. And this is what this video is all about. For those who are new to this channel, welcome. I am your host, name is Dean Armada, and I'm the Cloud and Data Center. Rock star. And on this channel, we talk about tech careers and certifications, trivia and tutorials in cybersecurity, trivia and tutorials in Cloud and Data Center, and my journey as an IT instructor. So feel free to check out the rest of the channel and consider subscribing. All right, so this is our traditional three-tier hierarchical topology. And we have the routers connecting to uh, the service provider uh, internet. And we also have the core layer. Okay, this is our core switches one and two. We also have the distribution layer, distribution switch one and two, and we have the access switches as well. Now the access switches, these are the switches connected directly to the endpoint devices. So this are this is an example of a three-tier hierarchical model in a data center environment. That's why our endpoints are servers. So let me just add it here, access switches. Now, uh, three-tier hierarchical topology is okay in a campus or enterprise network. And why is that? Well, because think about it. If you are in the office, uh, most of your traffic is sent to where? Think about it. Is it sent to your local network, to the LAN? No, of course not. Most of the time, you send the traffic towards north, okay? And this is what we call the north to south traffic. Okay, and what do you mean north-south or uh, sending towards north? Well, north means you send it to the internet or to the WAN, data center uh, via WAN, what else, public cloud or VPN, okay? Meaning you don't really send traffic to your local network. Um, in some location, yes, if you are doing some management, configuring of routers and switches, or if you have um, local applications, such as uh, a local storage NFS servers, but most of the time, you send the traffic towards north, okay? And again, when you send uh, traffic, uh, let's say, to a website, to the internet, you send it, uh, the request traffic towards north, and it will respond back to you, which is southbound. Now, again, this is okay in an enterprise or campus environment, but in a data center, not really. But why? Think about this. In a data center environment, servers doesn't communicate much towards north. Okay? They don't browse website. Yes, sometimes they uh, send requests to some of the public web servers like GitHub, etc. Uh, but not as often when users send and set, uh, send requests to the public network. Okay but it's more of a client sends requests towards the servers. And many people think it's very simple. Let's say you have a client, it sends a, a, a request, an HTTP request to this web server. Many people believe is that once the web server received that request, it will process it and it will send a response back to the source, to the client. In a way, this is correct, but it's more complex than this. There are a lot of things happening in the data center. Okay, our servers communicate uh, very often. Okay, they are all busy trying to reach each other. This is what really happens when a web server receives an HTTP request. It may, or usually, it sends requests to other servers. Okay. Uh, for example, the web server received the request. Now it will send uh, a request to, let's say, a caching server. Okay, so this is the caching server. Now the caching server may send another request to, let's say, the application server. And this application server will also need information 
from the messaging server. And this messaging server needs to connect to, let's say, a database server. Okay, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of communication going on on all of these servers. Now, this is a very simple design. Obviously, in a real world production environment, okay, it can be worse, way worse, or more, uh, way more complicated than this. Now, this is what we call lateral movement or east to west traffic. Okay, where servers communicate to each other. Now, is this okay? in uh, an enterprise environment well not really because again we don't really send much um in our local network but the question is is three-tier hierarchical topology okay in a data center environment let's analyze first in the real world environment how many access switches do we run in our example this is very simple we only have three access switches switches that is directly connected to the endpoint devices. In a real world environment, depends how big your data center is. This can be, uh, I don't know, it can be 50 or 100. Again, depends how huge your data center and how many applications, how many clients do you serve, etc. Now, let's be conservative. Let's say we have 50 access switches. These are the switches that connects directly to the endpoint devices. Okay, such as uh, servers. Now, if we have 50 access switches, how many distribution switches shall we have? Here's the thing. Most of the time, distribution switches are paired. Why? Because in our previous video, we know that we need redundancy. Okay, we need redundancy. We need this pair to be a logical device, a single logical device. That's why we need to enable VPC, but VPC only activated by pair, okay? If you're going to create another pair of VPC, that will be more complicated, more routing, etc. So in short, this is limited to two switches. Two versus 50 is not just fair, okay? That means for every switch, it needs to cater 25, excuse me, for every distribution switch, it needs to cater and serve 25 access switches. And this will um, have a result or the result would be too much congestion and uh, it will cause bottleneck, okay? This will cause bottleneck. So in, in short, this is really a bad design, okay? Now, there's a solution. The solution is very simple. Avoid free care hierarchical topology because it's not scalable. Now, this is where our spine and leaf topology comes in. So what I'm gonna do is I will just almost copy what we have here on the left side of our screen. Uh, but this time we're gonna convert this to spine and leaf. Basically, it's just two layers, okay? Spine and leaf. And uh, this will be spine one, this will be spine two, this will be leaf one, leaf two, and leaf three. And let me just move this, all right, there you go. So basically, leaf connect to spines. Every, each leaf connects to all the spines, as, as simple as that. Uh, the connection is all consistent, okay? And uh, it's very simple because all endpoints connect to, uh, to the leaf. And spines doesn't really connect each other. And spines doesn't connect to any other device other than leaves. So leaf 1 connects to spine 1 and spine 2. Leaf 2. There you go. Now, the good thing about spine and leaf topology is it is scalable. Meaning, if I add leaf 4... Okay, or leaf five, leaf six, I can also add spine three, four, and so forth. Now, if I have three spines, this means that my leaf or leaves connects to the spines. See that? Leaf four connects to spine one, two, and three. Um, so this is how 
a spine leaf topology looks like. If you think about it, is it a full mesh topology? Not really, because spines doesn't connect to each other. Uh, how about leaf? Well, the leaf has two areas or two faces. One is the northbound, which is connecting to spine. And the other is southbound, which connects to the servers. Okay, so these are the servers. Too big. Uh, <laughs> let's let's revise this. So these are the servers. Now maybe you're thinking, um, does leaf connect to each other? Well, it depends. If you're gonna enable VPC, yes, possible. Okay, so this should be a pair, and leaf three and four should be a pair to enable VPC. But assuming that you're not doing VPC, no, leaves doesn't connect and send traffic to each other. It all should be via spines. Now maybe you're thinking, how about the core switch? Because access switch is like the leaf connected to the compute or to the endpoint node. And uh, the distribution switch, these are the backbone, it's like the spines. How about the core switch? Well, there's no core switch. But how can we connect to the outside world, to the router? Well, there is a special leaf, okay? Everything is a leaf. If you want to connect it to any other device, it's a leaf. Whatever happens, leaf connects to any other device. Um, it's not the spines. Spines is just the backbone connected to leaf. Now, if you want to connect, let's say, your router, so this is your router, and this is your, hmm, let's do that again. This is your router, and you want it to connect to the internet. All right, you connect this to a leaf, and the leaf also does the same. We connect it to spines. There you go. You connect it to the spines there. But this leaf is a little special because we identified it. These are the leaves. This should be leaf six. There you go. Because this is a this this pair of leaf is a little special because we have identified them uh, as a pair of leaf that connects to the outside world. Okay, which is connected to the router and the router connects to the service provider internet or WAN. It doesn't matter. So we call this as border leaf okay it's not the same as the core switch and why is that because the core switch only connects to the router and the distribution switches the leaf 5 and 6 is like any other leaf okay it can also be connected to the servers i can add server connection here add server connection here as well so in short Leaf 5 and 6 is just any other leaf where we connect endpoint devices such as servers and we also connect the routers to the same leaf switches. So it's well optimized and we're not wasting ports. Okay. Now, another thing that I would like to mention about this topology, uh, spine and leaf topology, it is not only designed to be scalable. The idea of this design is to have a gigantic switch okay yes a gigantic switch and i'm not kidding so this represent a switch okay if you think about it all of the ports combined from leaf one to leaf six this are like line cards or ethernet module and we're comparing this to us to a huge uh, chassis based switch uh, such as the Nexus 9500. Okay, uh, so the line cars are comparable or analogous to the leaf switches. If you want to add more ports, add line cards. In this case, if you want to add more ports to connect to more compute or servers, you need to add more leaf switches. How about the spines? Well, the, since the spines are the backbone, right? These are the backbone switches. And uh, by having more backbone, this means it's less congestion, okay? 
um, the, the traffic flow will be more efficient. So this means as we add more spines, um, the faster the traffic that sends from one leaf to another. And this is also analogous and comparable to fabric module. So in Cisco Nexus 9500, we have the fabric module, okay, which connects all line cards together. And uh, since I mentioned that this should look like or treated as one gigantic switch, this endpoint here is not just servers and routers. You can also connect any other um, endpoint device. And when I say endpoint device, this can also be security appliances, load balancers, and many others. And some of you may be curious, what protocol shall we use in between the spines and leaf? Okay, what protocol or are we using layer two or layer three connectivity? Uh, if we use layer two, of course, we'll be using STP because of the uh, loop type of environment. And if we're using layer three, are we using routing protocol? If yes, which one? OSPF, BGP, etc. Now we're going to talk about this in another video. Many companies are still using the three-tier hierarchical topology in their data centers. Spine and leaf topology is not only for SDNs and Cisco ACI. It can be also for Cisco Nexus NXOS mode running in their data centers. Or it can be any other data center network solutions as well.